aquarium water man. So, okay, today's video we're going to talk about hydrophobic soil. Obviously, us now in the Haarfeld, we're getting drier the further we're going up into autumn. So, what can we do to prevent that? And more importantly, I'm going to show you, just touching again further on the last couple of videos, uh, hinting neglect uh, and what happens to your yard and how quickly things can go bad when you neglect your yard. So, let's have a look at that. So, the first thing I want to show you, as you can clearly tell, this is now late afternoon I've done a first pass with the mower so I've just done a little bit of a clean up down here and you can tell this middle section that I cut out that's the only section in the last couple of months that's actually been treated with anything so it's had one application of rescue one application so a single application of natural kelp plus with a single application of Vuma vegetative the entire collar that I cut out has not been at all they've all had the same water however now you can clearly tell look at that collar that is what your yard or even my lot yard would look like if I didn't do anything to this inside part. It's as evident as it can be. Just treating your grass just a little bit does help significantly. Then after seeing so much damage over summer in so many different yards, people are losing hope quickly, but you shouldn't. The simple fact of just a little bit of looking after your yard, so not complete neglect, can do quite a lot for you. So don't give up now. And then before we Go and have a look at the goodies up there to, on how to treat the hydrophobic swell. I just want to show you what my, this, this is actually what's under my entire lawn area. So right up at the top it's just a little bit thicker. Now only at the bottom I've got about 50, 15 centimeters of relatively good soil. Usually the type of stuff that comes with sod and what have you in this country. But here, you can see I was drawing lines. So this is what's, this is what's under my ground. This is a little stone that I've got here. This is my soil just 15 centimeters you will take under the surface of the grass that is what you call hydrophobic soil it's also the wrong type of soil although i did convert another area in the yard the whole top of the whole top part of that yard is this okay well that, like right at the top and then in the beds it's all this and i've managed to sort it out um, of course now with me leaving it alone it's all come back to this but it does prove that just looking after your yard just a little bit using wetting agents the right way and the right type of wetting agents because yes they do differ um, and just a little bit of treatment goes a long way even when you're growing grass on really horrid soil we don't all have golf course perfect soil in our yards and we're also not going to change it to move soil is the most expensive thing that you can do in your yard even DIYing it you're going to spend the most amount of time moving soil so yeah Let's go and have a look at some wetting agents and what you can do to help your hydrophobic soil. So before we do that, you can see we're at the end of the yard, you can clearly tell the collar versus the inside section of the, of the yard. It's significantly different. You can tell the roundup section how much rounder it is now. But look at this. As we've been getting less and less rain and still have the heat, this is the type of problem that many people, especially up in the half halt, are going to see. So you can tell here this is my problem area it rained last night okay only one mil but obviously the water would just shed right off this uh, Bermuda is the only thing growing here and it's already looking a bit crispy it's just a little patch of kukuyu over there this is why I call kukuyu the learner grass wherever it <laughs> it it, it uh, it's very grateful when you give it something but the minute you start taking things away like fertilizer in this case it just ducks it just disappears it doesn't care that you it doesn't love you if you don't feed it, it's going to disappear. Bermuda hangs on. Even the yellow Berea hangs on, but that's looking quite bad. Uh, it's curly, as you can see. I've never had curly LM before, not even out front with the previous video. And there you can see as you start to get that dip where water retains against the inside of that bed, that LM grass is looking okay. But yeah, I mean, versus, versus this, I mean, there's literally a line there for you to have a look at. Right, so back to this. We're going to try and fix this up. This happens not just in your lawn, it happens in your flower beds and it happens in your pots. And it normally comes from when it hasn't been hydrated correctly for a long period of time, or it hasn't been fertilized, or there hasn't been some form of soil conditioning happening in that pot. The soil starts to dry up, and especially on areas away from the root ball. So the plant gives off a certain amount of carbohydrate value from the roots that keeps feeding that little cycle right up against the root ball. 
Um, and the more arid you make the rest of the region, the more it concentrates and makes that root ball smaller and smaller and eventually the plant will die. The same thing happens with your grass. When you see that the, that the moisture is only staying around the, the root ball of the plant it's, and it's sort of running around the rest of the soil, it's going in the outside, it's not getting to that root ball because the rest of the soil has formed that hydrophobic layer. You've got to resaturate the soil and that's actually the difficult part. I'm going to show you now just a little method on how you can resaturate the soil in, your, in a pot plant and then we're going to move that education over to your lawn. So why does it happen in the first place? Well, the very first reason is that there just is not sufficient microbial activity happening in the soil, probably because there's not enough nutritional value in the soil there. Um, it could be because of clay type soils, it could be for multiple reasons, sandy soils, all this kind of thing. Now feeding just the surface does help keep your grass alive for a good period of time. But the biggest reason that I've found in my SA type soils and garden is when we've had a lot of rain and then all of a sudden that rain gets taken away so autumn for us the heat stays up and the soil you, you find the grass sort of gets like a bit of a hangover the soil also kind of gets a hangover and that's it trying to protect itself it builds this little bit of a sort of waxy layer on the surface and water repels to rehydrate that surface actually requires multiple applications slowly and us gardeners are too impatient so here are a few tips to make that process faster okay so the very first thing that we need to talk about is a wetting agent. This is the very first product that you should be putting down when you've got hydrophobic soil. You can use other products like liquid composts and uh, kelp or fish emulsions, all these kinds of things to try and uh, nurture the soil to, and also to relieve it or release or remove that waxy value that now uh, starts to occur when the, when the soil is actually hydrophobic. But a proper wetting agent and more importantly, a penetrative type wetting agent like Super Wet here. This is designed to allow water, it breaks that surface tension, allows water to, to really saturate deeply into the soil. And this is just a very high quality one. And you get other products like Aqua Wet. And I mean, you've seen me also use a bunch of different products. These, and this is why I said earlier, not all wetting agents are the same. We, 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 we use the word wetting agent kind of incorrectly. You've got to look at it a little bit more uh, you know, by the book. This is going to help for, let's say you want to put a herbicide into a tank like this and you need that when it sprays through the little nozzle at the end, it must now spray the finest possible mist and when it connects with the grass, it mustn't be these biggish droplets and of course you can adjust the nozzle to help with that but it's never as good as if you use a wetting agent like this. It helps spray and spread a finer particle so that more of the surface of the leaf gets covered then you're able to keep, kill weeds more effectively so a product like aqua wet is that type of product it will do all that work properly and it also helps uh, for the product to stick to a leaf's surface just a little bit better whereas super wet does all of that and really allows a superior amount of water penetration to happen in really hydrophobic soils this is this is the hard tack now you shouldn't just use that kind of stuff on its own you should be using kelp or a fish emulsion or some other kind of liquid fertilizers um, maybe not maybe not chemical fertilizers in this circumstance but I mean, you could too but you need something to condition the soil and to to give it a bit of an organic uh, kick in the backside so something like natural kelp plus which is actually a combination of, of a good quality kelp product as well as the um, the fish proteins um, it's going to help you significantly but you can use a liquid compost as well and there's a variety of other of other things that you could put down into this equation so I'm going to use an example here I've got a little frangipani it's a cutting that I've been working on for the last couple of months um, I actually forgot about it and now the soil that's, that's in its little pot um, has become hydrophobic so when I put water into the pot I found that it sort of goes to the edges of the pot and it just runs straight through so I'm going to show you how to saturate that and that principle is what we're going to move over into the lawn before we do that though I just want to say I'm not going to do one of these uh, I've seen too many of these tests on wetting agents where guys go and they they sit there on the ground by the by the dry soil and then they put a cup of water over the dry area over here and then they put a cup of uh, water treated with a little bit of wetting agent and then they pour it into the ground here and then they pour it into the ground there and to me they both look like they're doing the exact same thing and probably to you as a viewer as well you're thinking it's doing the same thing but then you're being told oh, it's definitely penetrating better. I can tell you right now, it's probably not. It's not magic. It's just science and biology and agronomy and all these things that agricultural uh, sectors use 
to make this hydrophobic soils better. It's not magic, it's just you've got to follow a process. It takes time to get this right. This is just the start of the process. So to break that surface layer first, good idea. And then that saturation takes a little bit of time. But these are the things that help. Okay, so before we toy around, I just want to basically say that with in any of these circumstances, just getting more organic, not matter. Uh, if you've got a flower bed, you can turn organic matter like compost into the bed. It will start to help with this hydrophobic soil issue. But when you've got a solid structure like your lawn area, um, you would need to core aerate and add a different soil medium uh, to that very invasive process. You don't always get to do that. So to treat it from the top is what we are doing in this circumstance. So you could use a product like Rescue and just let it take its time to eventually work its way into the soil here and start to start with that transformation. This is the this is the souped up version. So here I've got my little frangipani. You can see my kids have been cutting the ends of the leaves off because they see their dad trimming plants all the time and they want to do the same. This now is messed up. The soil is I mean it's just broken back into fibers and what most people do is just change this entire medium out and you don't have to you just have to rehydrate this and give it a bit of nutritional value again to be taken up by the soil so that it can be reused again we are going to make a little formu formulation quickly using wetting agent and the natural kelp plus so fish emulsion and kelp and we're going to saturate this plant and this is the process that's going to be carried over to our lawns so in this circumstance i'm going to use a super wet literally just well, let's give it a bit of a shake first just a drop that is way more than enough you can use a, a mill for about 100 square meters if you wanted to so this is now a souped up example and now the same thing for your liquid compost or your kelp or your fish protein just a bit of a dose there. Give it a bit of a mixy mixy. You can see it's almost got like a bit of a soapy kind of effect to it, which is kind of the process. And now this, uh, it, it can apply to any one of your potted plants. Uh, you can do this to anything. Um, yeah, let's just get it in there. Obviously I'm doing it in such a way that I just see that it's saturating, but I'm not actually going to allow too much of the, the potting medium to escape, otherwise it just sits here and you've wasted it. We're going to let this drain. So, this little pot got not only saturated with a bit of the wetting agent, but it also got a good fertilizing. Now naturally you must realize that this is potting medium so it's going to be able to take up a lot more of that nutritional value including the wetting agent better than what a severely hydrophobic soil like this is back here so that's why i say the process is one that in this circumstance is going to take time and it has to take time so we start by applying the wetting agent letting that settle we're going to work on it now over the next few weeks to get this right um, although I think we can get this right quite quickly and there's different ways to apply it so let me show you what else you could do to apply these products so in small applications and maybe in your pot plants and that kind of thing you can use a little sprayer like this you mix a little bit of fertilizer in there maybe put some kelp in this as well as a little bit of the wetting agent and obviously top that up then with water do it the other way around and yeah you could just spritz it on your plant and into the soil and pour it into the soil and just keep everything going uh, and hydrated for a much longer period of time just having a tiny little bit of wetting agent in this mix i'm talking 0.1 mils in a one liter container like this will be efficient or sufficient to keep that plant hydrated and it, it will be perfectly fine when you do something like that so this little frangipani has just been helped out a lot there the second form of application is just any old pressure sprayer. Now, what it means in these circumstances is that you're probably not going to put down enough water uh, when doing it. So, but what you can still do is mix up a little bit of the uh, wetting agent inside your sprayer and then apply it over the entire affected area, just as like a broadcast spray until you've put down the required amount of the product over the given 
area so that you're going to read the label for and then you water it in with your hose pipe so pretty straightforward in this on, on that application then as well and then and then you've got one of these and you get much fancier versions of this this is just all that i've got and it's just a little venturi system so you'll put a bit of water in here uh, and then you'll put your mix into this and then you'll spray it out knowing what the ratio is of the venturi of course over to the area and then this type of process is called a drench because you're putting a lot more water down with the product so i'm going to put it into the hose end sprayer and we're just going to do a very gentle drench right there just at the waiting agent right now i don't want to waste any product running off the surface so let's do that okay water first then the product just a splash of product in there you should measure it but i'm just going to wing it I know by experience that that was too much, but it's fine. Give it a bit of a gentle shake. You don't want to cause too much foaming. And let's get spray. Okay, dokie. So this process will be a drench. The dogs are in the way. They're just going to learn to move quickly. Sorry, leader. Move. Okay, so you you don't have to be absolutely perfect with the application. You just need to get it over the area. And then when the mix is done, then you just keep watering it, watering it in again, but a bit later on. Give it some time to settle first. So everywhere where I see it looking a bit dodge, that's where I'm gonna spray. Okay, and there it is. I sort of drew a little bit of a square in there as well so that I could clearly have a little area which is demarcated besides just that whole top part. Uh, and that's it. So we've just drenched it. I'm going to leave it for a while now when I see that the grass is dry and as the soil starts to look like it's dry, I'm going to come out here and wet it again. It is so hot today that this camera is cut out about six or seven times trying to film this. So if I have a level of frustration that's visible in my face, you now know why. But yeah, that's it. Let the stuff work. Putting down a waiting agent is su super, super, super important. Just do it. It will help you a lot. It helps with every other aspect of nutrition for your yard. It helps with watering. It helps with uh, organic, not production, but it helps with movement of or microorganisms in the soil. Um, and just about any waiting agent will help with that. The better the waiting agent the better that will work. So I hope that proves useful. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Uh, contact me on Instagram if you guys have questions. I will leave a comment, all that kind of good stuff. And yeah, thanks again. Cheers.